Should the Raiders sign Russell Wilson if it only costs $1.21 million? Give me a yes, give me a no. Coming up here on the Raiders report, I'm going to tell you why the Raiders should do this and why the Raiders shouldn't target Russell Wilson in free agency. Raider Nation, what's going on? It's Mitchell Renz here, host of the Raiders Report. In case you were wondering, yes, I did shave my balls this morning. Shout out to today's sponsor, Manscaped. And if you're like, crap, Mitch, I did not. Guess what? Head on over to manscaped.com. Use code Raiders for 20% off. And you're going to get free shipping on the best male grooming products out there. I know that there's going to be a handful of people that when they tune into this show, they're going to be like, this idea of signing Russell Wilson, it's balls. But you know what? Sometimes you got to get a little bit ballsy if you want to get over the hump. And to me, I want every person, before you say no, the Raiders should not sign Russell Wilson to the vet minimum. I want you to just at least hear me out. So coming up here on today's show, we're going to get into the latest around the Denver Broncos, cutting Wilson, and we're going to get into... Why it does make sense for the Raiders to target the veteran quarterback. And I know he's a cornball. He's a weirdo. He's not a Raider. I hear everything out there. But when I want people to watch this show, and this one specifically, it's let's have an adult conversation. Because to me, if you just click into this video and you say no, that's like your child throwing a temper tantrum. Hear me out. Let's talk about it. So Russell Wilson, he was cut from the Denver Broncos on Monday, and he was benched week 17. And the moment that he was benched, it was known that the Denver was going to end up moving on from him. Because they cut him on Monday, it was an $89 million dead cap hit. What's crazy is Russell originally had two years on his deal. Then the Broncos gave him a five-year extension. So technically... The five-year extension that the Broncos gave him, literally, he never played a single down off of that extension. Imagine giving a quarterback a seven-year, $296 million deal and then cutting him after just two years of that. It was clear that Sean Payton didn't like him and that Payton didn't believe that Wilson was going to be able to essentially use the or be successful in his type of offense. The reason why the Broncos had to cut him now is because $37 million of his contract would have became fully guaranteed for 2025. So next season, if he would have still been on the roster March 17th, 2024, by cutting him now, this gives him the opportunity which to go out and look for a new potential suitor, new potential team. Maybe that team is the Raiders. But I do know this. The top two quarterbacks in the free agent market are Russell Wilson, Kirk Cousins, and then probably in his own little tier down there is Baker Mayfield. Bottom line is, though, Baker Mayfield, he's going to get over probably $30 million. Kirk Cousins, probably going to get over $30 million. If you can get Russell Wilson for $1.21, it's interesting. And there's some people out there like, how is this even possible? Luckily, I'm going to tell you. So there was a report that came out, and this is also something that for the people that have watched this show, I have been talking about signing Russell Wilson to a $1.21 million contract since January 4th. So let's just put that out there. But it has been reported by multiple sources, Ian Rappaport, Adam Schefter, that Wilson could take the vet minimum this upcoming season, which is $1.21 million, because he's already going to get $89 million the moment he got cut. Now, in terms of how much he's just going to get this season, he's only going to get only $39 million from the Denver Broncos already this year. The Broncos, though, they get a credit for Wilson's earnings in 2024. So if Russ like really wants to stick it to Denver, and I know some of y'all are like, well, but why would he only take $1.21 million? The reason that he's only going to take $1.21 is, again, one reason. He's making $89 million the moment he gets cut. Well, he just got cut. He's going to make $39 million of that money this year. So no matter where he plays this season, He's making $39 million this year. So why Russ would take the vet men? It's because the Broncos get a credit for the amount Wilson signs for in 2024. So if you're a little bit confused of what exactly that means, and I spelled signs wrong. I don't know if you guys have seen it. Uh, we can fix it, though. It's basically, if Russell Wilson signs a contract for $1.21 million, the Broncos also get $1.21 million in 2024. If... Russell Wilson signs a contract for, let's say, $40 million. Well, then guess what? The Denver Broncos get a credit for $40 million. Based off the way that their relationship ended, 
I don't see Russell Wilson giving any money towards the Denver Broncos and helping them out in the future. On top of that, Wilson, throughout his entirety of his career, has talked about that legacy means more to him than money. And it might be a little bit easier for him to say that considering the fact that he is made millions of dollars. It might be easier to say that because his last house had 12 bathrooms in it. It's also probably easier to say because his wife might make more money than he does, Sierra. So, like, he's not hurting for money. At the end of the day, he literally said one time that he wants to be remembered like Tom Brady or in the same conversation as Tom Brady and Derek Jeter. If that's the people that you want to be like, here's your opportunity, Russ. Here's your opportunity to take a one-year prove-it deal on a stacked roster because if it's the Raiders, you're going to be able to build around them on any team. Then you can allocate a lot of that other money and you can move it around to build a stack team in 2024. And then guess what? If Russ goes out and he balls out, well, then he's a free agent in 2025. And then that's when he can get his big-time contract to kind of ride out into the sunset. Now, I do want to say this again. The reason why y'all should subscribe to the Raiders Report is I know that some people think that we just put out crazy ideas on a show because they're too lazy to actually click on the video. Like, just because I say in a video, which I did... Back on January 4th, could Wilson come to Vegas? Everyone thinks like, oh, man, Mitch is saying that Russell Wilson's coming to Vegas. No. If you believe every book by its cover, like, this reminds me of somebody when they like, oh, they see this and they don't click on it. That would be like, if you were to see the movie or just the, the title or the cover of Fifty Shades of Grey, you getting upset that that movie's just not just literally just 50 shades of the color gray. You know what I'm talking about? Like, what I want you to do is actually click into the video, see the content, because everything that everybody is talking about right now, we were talking about back on January 4th. Look at the date. We knew it was going to happen. So make sure that you stay ahead of the game. Make sure that when information comes out, you're not like your, some of your buddies who are like, oh, wow, I had no idea. You can be that person that says, you know what? I knew this was going to happen. My job is to keep you guys up to date. If I ever need my car fixed, I don't go on the Raiders port to get my car fixed. I go to somebody that can fix my car. If, if my toilet breaks, I'll go to a plumber. Why? Because that's their job. My job is to keep you up to date around the Raiders, around the NFL, and I promise nobody's going to outwork me doing that. So let's talk about Russell Wilson now and here these last four seasons. And he's had some ups and downs. 2022 was by far the worst year of his career. However, though, when you look at the 2023 season, I don't think it was nearly as bad as what people think or thought around that. But I'll also say this in regards to Wilson, and one of the reasons why I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt, he was very good with the Seattle Seahawks for a long time. And we've also seen when you are a part of a regime, when you're a part of a certain head coach, offensive coordinator, guess what? It's easier to learn that offense inside of out. You're going to have more success. Well, then he's got to learn a brand new offense in 2022, and he struggled with, with Nathaniel Hackett. Then the next year, he gets a brand new head coach, brand new offense, and was a little bit better in that. Like, to me, we are riding Russell Wilson off and it's totally a quarterback that's more than likely going to be in the Hall of Fame conversation. I'll say that he's not a lock to make the Hall of Fame. He does have a lot of games underneath his belt with 188. But, like, I'm looking at all of you right now, and I'm saying this. Russell Wilson, for a long time, was a very good quarterback with the Seattle Seahawks. Then, changes teams. Brand-new head coach, brand-new offense coordinator. Struggled drastically. Then gets another new head coach and another new offensive coordinator and struggled a little bit. My point is, when he's had some, you know, continuity or when he's had a little bit of backbone, like, he's been successful. And I get it. He's going to add to the Raiders, new head coach, new offensive coordinator. There is a risk. There is a risk to everything that you do in life. But if the Raiders don't believe that they're going to be able to go up and get their quarterback, at least having an option in Russell Wilson, it needs to be thought about. Because the last time I checked, free agency does happen before the NFL draft. And what you cannot do and you cannot afford is to go into the NFL draft with only Aiden O'Connell as your quarterback and then miss on all the quarterbacks in the draft. Because if Aiden's your starter, he's the worst starting quarterback in the National Football League in 2024. And that means your entire offseason went to waste. So coming up here, the Raiders have been linked to Wilson, which is one of the reasons why we're talking about all this stuff here again. And the moment that Wilson got released, the moment that he got cut, everyone was like, Mitch, should the Raiders go out and sign Wilson? I'll give you why they should, why they should, and I'll also tell you how they were linked. But here's the thing. If you're getting cut at home because your male grooming products suck, I got an upgrade button. Watch this. Upgrade right now here. Shout out to our sponsor, Manscaped. And this is... 
the month of March. Like, if you're not trying to get lucky in the month of March, what the hell are you even doing with yourself? So shout out to Manscaped because today's show is brought to you by them, and they are really trying to help our shamrocks look great this year. This year, don't just chase rainbows. Make your own pot of gold and groom your little leprechaun with the leaders in below the kilt care. Say goodbye to your clover forest with Manscaped's Lawnmower 5.0 and let your confidence shine bright. Embrace the luck of the Irish and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. Head over to manscaped.com, use code Raiders for 20% off and free shipping. Equipped with a dual LED spotlight, you can navigate your shamrock patch in peace. Worried to make a mess? Nah, fear not. This wonder is waterproof. Shaped by the misty moors under a waterfall or even during a ran dance. So Nation, get 20% off and free shipping. Use code Raiders at manscaped.com in case you weren't paying attention and playing with your shamrock. That's 20% off and free shipping with code Raiders at manscaped.com. This St. Patrick's Day, make sure your little hairy leprechaun is luckier than ever with Manscaped. So to me, anytime somebody ever asks me, Mitch, what are your favorite products with Manscaped? We've been a, they've been a sponsor here with us for probably, I don't know, four years at this point. I love all their lawnmower products. I use, I always get the upgrade on them. Shout out to them. On top of that, it's the boxers. Like, I really want y'all to go try out their boxers. And they also have, like, a traveling case. So, like, when I travel, not all my hair gets everywhere. Like, one of Alex's biggest pet peeves is, like, when I travel with, like, my razors and I put it with, like, all my other bathroom stuff and then all my little hairs get all over all my other stuff. Like, right there, you get that traveling case. You're good to go. The weed whacker, which is something that you put up in your nose, get rid of all those ridiculous hairs. Like, I'll be real. If you're ever talking to me out in Vegas in person and I see a hair sticking out of your nose, I'm not going to hear anything you're saying. So Manscaped has a lot of awesome products. Hell, they even have deodorant for your ball sack. If you're putting deodorant underneath your arms, guess what? You should probably put it on your balls. Put your hand down there. What does it smell like? If it's not great, get Manscaped. All right, let's go to Jeremy Fowler here. He recently has mentioned five destinations that he could see Russell Wilson potentially landing on. And here were the five teams linked to Russ. The Atlanta Falcons, Las Vegas Raiders, Pittsburgh Steelers, Minnesota Vikings, and the New England Patriots. The reason why I think this is very intriguing to me, and I'll give you which team I believe is the most likely to sign Russ, because, spoiler alert, they're not even on this list right now, but this is why Fowler believes the Raiders signing Russell Wilson makes sense, and if I'm looking at you being honest, it does make sense for the Raiders to sign Russell Wilson. So this is honestly a pretty good fit. The Raiders will explore ways to trade up for a quarterback in the draft, Coach Antonio Pierce has an affinity for Jaden Daniels from their Arizona State days, but moving from 13 into the top three is a big task. The Raiders have not been linked to the Cousins or Mayfield free agencies. It is perhaps notable that Wilson listed Las Vegas as one of his four preferred destinations amid talk of a trade from Seattle in 2021. He would relish the chance to play with Devontae Adams, too. So my question before I give you my top destinations for Russell Wilson, which the Raiders are going to be on, where do you think that Wilson is going to play in 2024? Because I don't see him not being a starting quarterback in the NFL. Like, you can dislike Russ all you want. If you don't think Russell Wilson is a top 32 quarterback in the league, then I just am going to say that you're wrong. Like, you can dislike a guy. But on this show, I want to be honest with you. I want to keep it real. It's the only way you're going to ever improve in life is when you're just legitimately honest. Russell Wilson, 2024, where is he going to end up playing? To me, the number one destination for Wilson, I'm actually going to say is the New York Giants. And the reason why I believe the Giants are is because the Giants have been linked to Russ in years past. On top of that, it's also been noted that Sierra wouldn't mind living in New York and Russ could potentially stay in New York, get a little bit more... Uh, publicity. Number two team is Las Vegas. Number three is the Minnesota Vikings. Number four is the New England Patriots. Five is Pittsburgh. Six is in Atlanta. And the reason why that these teams are where they are is because where the Raiders are at 13, if they can't move up, you could sign him to a $1.21 million contract, cheap deal, and then you're going into the draft with at least a plan B at the quarterback position. The Minnesota Vikings, I'm not sure what they're going to do at QB. And I don't think Justin Fields goes there. Like, why would you trade an inner trade? The New England Patriots, I see them taking a quarterback early, or maybe that could be a team for Justin Fields, could be a team for Russell Wilson as well. The Steelers, everything indicates to me that they are just going to end up sticking with Kenny Pickett. And then Atlanta's been recently poking around with Kirk Cousins, and it sounds like that's where Kirk Cousins is going to go. So coming up here, why the Raiders should sign Russell Wilson. 
why they should. And I know, I, I see the comments, the amount of people that are putting the throw up emoji in the comments is, is fine. I will say it's a little childish, and I just want you to think about the ideas of all these topics before you say no. So here's number one reason why you do it. The most important position to upgrade at is quarterback. If you can upgrade at any position, anywhere, at any time, you do it. Russell Wilson is a clear upgrade over Aiden O'Connell. Anybody that tells you Aiden O'Connell is better than Russell Wilson, I'm sorry. They just don't know what the hell they're talking about. The next reason, you get to keep your NFL draft capital. And maybe you don't have to move up as much. And the reason why you don't have to move up as much is because you're not as desperate. Like, to me, the Raiders potentially trade up into the top three is because they know that they don't have a quarterback in free agency. They know that they can't roll with Aiden next season. So that means when there's a little bit of desperation, you're willing to pay more. If you know that you have Russ, then you don't have to get desperate. And if Jaden Daniels still falls to you, you still have the opportunity to get Jaden Daniels. But let's say this, because I hear it all the time. The Raiders aren't going to be able to trade in the top three. If the Raiders aren't able to trade in the top three, you're not going to get Caleb. You're not going to get Drake May. And then you're not going to be able to get your main guy. Jaden Daniels, the Raiders' plan A has always been, and it always will be, to get Jaden Daniels. That's what the Raiders want to do. If you're unable to get Jaden, then you have a good fallback plan with Russell Wilson. Now, you can still draft a quarterback. It's a possibility. You just don't have to draft one as early because you don't have as big of a need because you still have Russell Wilson. Here's another one. The Raiders, to me, are a quarterback away from competing. They have nine picks in this year's draft. They have top eight salary cap money, and then once they cut Jimmy Garoppolo, they're going to have even more money. Once they cut Hunter Renfro, they're going to have even more money. So you have the ability to build in free agency. You have the ability to build in the draft, and if you don't have to give up all that draft compensation to be able to get your guy, and you don't have to give up all your money in free agency to get your guy, that sounds like that you're going to be able to build a stacked roster with Russell Wilson. And the last time Russell Wilson was on a stacked roster was with the Seattle Seahawks. And that turned out pretty well. The last reason is you can screw over Denver. And anytime that I can screw over a team that has lost to the Raiders for, what, eight games in a row, the last time the Broncos beat the Las Vegas Raiders, December 29th, 2019. What were you doing during that time? Um, it's been a long, long time. But the reason why they can screw over Denver, again, is based on the credit and based on where he ends up signing. If he signs 1.2, Denver only gets 1.2. Why the Raiders shouldn't sign Russell Wilson? If he's not willing to take the vet minimum deal, like the only way that I'm going to entertain this idea is if Wilson is cheaper than Aiden O'Connell. And I know that I could still say that, oh, well, Russ at $10 million is better than Aiden. It, he is better than Aiden. But to me, you're only going to bring in somebody that could potentially be a, a bad locker room fit as if it's that cheap of a type of contract you screw over Denver, it still gives you more money to allocate the free agency, and then you move forward that way. That also tells me that Russell Wilson is 100% bought in, and I need a 100% bought in Russell Wilson for this plan to work. Next thing is this. Wilson is a Band-Aid. Antonio Pierce said that he didn't want to have to put a Band-Aid at the quarterback position, but that's what Russ is. Russ is a Band-Aid at this point. He's 35 years old. His best years are more than likely behind him. I don't expect Russell Wilson to be a top 10 quarterback. But if he can at least be a top 16 QB at that price tag and then you build around him, that is a playoff caliber roster to me. The other reason why you don't sign Russ is he's not a franchise QB for 10 years. Antonio Pierce said that he's looking for his franchise guy for the next 10 seasons. Like, that's not going to happen. And realistically, this is more of just a one-year rental, one-year rental that needs to be able to teach a rookie. If Russell Wilson says, hey, I'm not going to teach a rookie quarterback because to me, just because you sign Russell Wilson doesn't mean that you're not going to draft a rookie. Because if I'm the Raiders, I'm still signing Russell to a 1.21 deal, knowing deep down that I'm going to have him here for one year, and then he's going to hit the open market next season, and I'm probably not going to bring him back unless the Raiders win the AFC West or they win the Super Bowl or make a deep playoff run. Then you can entertain the idea. But, like, I don't think it's a bad idea to sign Russell Wilson to $1.21 million. You have Aiden O'Connell can compete with Russ, and then you also, what, what if you're able to draft a quarterback like Spencer Rattler in round three have him learn one year behind Russ like or draft a QB like Michael Penix in the back end of the first or in the second round let him learn for one year behind Russ hell you draft Jaden Daniels at pick number four you let him for one year learn behind Russell Wilson like we have seen that that plan has worked before you let a QB sit I just think it's a much safer and not you're not throwing the year away where if Aiden's the starter you're throwing the year away the other reason why I don't know if I would do it, it's I don't want no more God guys. And hear me out when I say God guys. This has nothing to do with religion. 
It is more of Josh McDaniels thought that he walked on water and he thought that he was the greatest thing ever. Didn't take any criticism, never took any advice, just whatever his whatever he said, it went. My biggest fear with Russell Wilson is he is that exact same person of, hey, man, what I say goes, blah, blah, blah. Like, I'm just going to do whatever the hell I want. All eyes on me. All I, I want all the attention. That I'm never going to know, right? And that is, a, that is the worry. And that's why people, even though, Russell, you could get a top 15, 16 quarterback at 1.2, I think this is what scares people the most. So that is why you should. That is why you shouldn't sign Russell Wilson. The bottom line is this. To me, I do not think it is a bad idea at all for the Raiders to sign Russell Wilson at $1.21 million. And if the Raiders did end up doing it, I would welcome Russell to the silver and black. You're getting a quarterback better than Aiden. You're getting a quarterback cheaper than Brian Hoyer. And you're not risking as much entering the NFL draft. You can sit back a little bit, be a little bit more secure, and know that 2024 is not a wasted year with Tom Telesco and Antonio Pierce.